Greetings. I'm Karen Kenninger, the director of the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. And we are thrilled today to have the opportunity to visit with Matthew Whitaker, a wonderfully gifted and talented young musician and NLS patron. Matthew will be performing as part of the Concerts at the Library of Congress series. And this concert will be available for viewing this evening, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at www.youtube.com slash Library of Congress. Mr. Whitaker, thank you so very much for being with us today. I thank thought maybe we would, we would start at the beginning. Yeah. So, so Matt, tell me um, what your first experiences of music were. What, what got you started as a small child? What do you remember at the beginning of your musical career? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for having me. This is truly uh, an honor um, to be here. Um, how I got started, um, I have loved music since I was um, very little. <laughs> and um, um, my grandfather gave me my first keyboard at three years old. Um, and I taught myself nursery rhymes. Um, and when I was five, I started taking classical piano lessons. So classical piano lessons at the, at the age of five. You attended the Greenberg School of Music in New York City. Yeah. Uh, can you talk to us about what that experience was like, how, how long you attended and what you did there and, and whether you loved it or, or how that worked for you? Yes, yes. I've, um, like you said, I've been known there since I was five. Um, my teacher, Dahlia Sackis, um, who I've been working with uh, uh, is amazing. And we are still together today, uh, still working on classical piano technique. Ah. And um, yeah, uh, it's been great. I've also um, learned a lot on technology and how that works with music, um, using different software. And um, yeah, it's been really fun. And it's, it's a great school to learn um, and uh, they're currently doing online classes now. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's been amazing. So you're taking online classes from the Greenberg School now? Uh, currently, no, but uh, I'm, I'm studying with uh, Dahlia. Ah, okay, okay. So um, one of the things that I was interested in talking with you about is your use of Braille music. Is, is the Greenberg School where you learn to read Braille music? Yes, I did learn how to read Braille music, um, and uh, it was uh, a great experience for me because uh, um, one thing that uh, I like about reading Braille music is that I can feel my way around the, um, the store, and um, uh, it really tells you what is going on, whether like, it's showing you uh, like a fingering or an octave mark or you know, like the duration of a note. Um, you know, um, but um, it's uh, it's a great way to learn the music. Would you recommend to young students of music that they learn to read Braille music? Yes, I would. Um, but also experiment um, and, and and figure out how you you know like to learn music, whether it's by ear or reading the Braille. You know, but um, I would definitely recommend it so you get familiar with how uh, the Braille code works um, with it. So you would be able to use either either or both techniques for learning a piece. At NLS, of course, we are the br premier Braille music library in the world, and we yes. put a great deal of effort into creating and maintaining Braille music for, for our patrons. And it is, it is always good to know that it's being, being used and that people are are benefiting from the music that we're working with. Yes. We have a lot of classical music, but we don't have a, a great deal of, obviously, of jazz, as I think you mentioned at some point. You um, you started with, with classical music at the age of five, and you said yeah. that you were still studying classical music at this point. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm still studying with with Dahlia, we are um, just working on different pieces and um, also just working on classical technique on the piano. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, it's been really fun. And um, uh, you mentioned about jazz. Um, I um, uh, I started doing jazz when I was seven. Um, I remember um, my dad and I were in the toy, and um, he was playing jazz on the radio. Um, mm-hmm. And ever since then, it's been my favorite genre to play and listen to. What um, draws you to jazz? What I love about jazz is that um, I'm I'm able to be me, and I don't have to really worry about, you know, um, playing the song exactly how it's written, you know. Um, um, but I love the fact that I'm able to improvise in that style of music, and that really allows me to, you know, step out the box and just be me and have fun. Ah. So how, has your classical uh, training influenced your jazz playing? Yes, because um, I love blending other styles you know, into jazz. Like, um, for example, if I were to play some jazz song, I would, you know, if I feel it, uh, I would throw in a classical uh, quote here and there, you know, just mm-hmm. to um, tell, you know, the listener, oh, I also play classical. And, you know, that that goes with other styles. You know, I, you know, fuse together gospel, Latin, R&B, you know, um, all the styles. And it's really about, you know, making everything my own. Oh, uh, okay. One, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. One of the things that I that I uh, noticed in listening to your music and, and have read about, of course, is that you play the Hammond B organ and the piano, and sometimes you play them at the same time. Yes. What drew you to the Hammond? Um, I taught myself the Hammond organ when I was nine. Um, but uh, I love the way it sounds, um, and also how you were able to manipulate the sound by um, using all the controls available on the instrument. Um, and also, you know, you have um, the Hammond in particular has. Uh, two keyboards on top of each other and also the foot pedals and um it did take me a little bit to get used to everything but um uh, it's a really fun instrument same with the piano you know um but a lot of the instruments and like in fact all the instruments i play you know are very expressive uh organ piano keyboards uh, drums you know they all have their own expression you know that's what i love about um, each instrument Oh, I see. You're excellent. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very interesting to listen to the jazz, the way that you play it with, with both the piano and the and the organ. And yes. just the different uh, textures that you're able to build. Exactly. And uh, and also the way everything's laid out, because um, if I were to do piano and organ at the same time, um, uh, I would have it set up to where everything is... So I, uh, I would give an example. So if the piano is in front of me, the organ is behind me. So I would um, turn sideways and the piano would be my left, the organ would be my right or vice versa. Ah. You know, so mm-hmm. um, that's really cool. <laughs> and that still gives you the ability to play the pedals. No, uh, well, I mean, yes, yes, I've done it like that before, but I've also done it from like the piano, uh, the, the like uh, from the piano side. So I can like control the sustain pedal on the piano and still oh, sure. play the organ. Mm-hmm. Or vice versa, play the pedals and move my hand over, play the piano. Oh, I so. see. So you um, have not only learned to play classical music and entered Juilliard jazz um, studies, where you are studying jazz per se, but you are composing and arranging. Can you can you talk a little bit about your your process for composing? Yes, definitely. Um, how I compose. Um, is um first of all choose an instrument <laughs> choose an <laughs> instrument i want to start off with um and yeah just come up with some ideas you know just improv mm-hmm. and um if i like what is you know going on so far i just keep going with the idea and see where it goes from there and if i don't like it i can just you know improvise some more and come up with something else but how I record, um, I, for the most part, usually start out on drums, actually. And uh-huh. I, yeah, I come up, uh, like, 
either while I'm recording or just sitting at the drums, I just come up with the structure, you know, you know of or like the format of the song, whether composing or arranging, and just record drums first and then just add the other instruments on top. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm I'm curious about something. You title your pieces. I guess all composers do title their pieces. And I'm wondering, do the titles in influence the piece or do you add the titles later? I mean, it really depends. Like um I've written songs where I title it first and then compose off of that or you know, like you said, just compose and title it after. You know. So, I mean, it, it really depends on how I'm feeling, you know. Mhm. <laughs> like do, like a couple of your pieces I think have people's names in them. Are they are you thinking about those people when you're composing the piece or Yes, yes. Like for example, um, um, uh, my manager, uh, Michelle Taylor, um, uh, I named that song Miss Michelle because uh, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, she's my manager, and um, she actually asked me to write that song for her. So um, as I was uh, writing it, um, I was you know thinking about that, and you know I I, I had her name in my head. So interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> you you did a 60 minutes thing where you talked about some um, neuroscience experimentation that they were doing oh, yeah. to see how your brain works. How did you feel about that? Yes, that was an amazing experience for me. Uh, what happened was I was in an MRI stand and I had a piano that was on my lap. And basically um, I was being asked to play a um, a passage that, that I had to memorize um, and they would uh, stand my brain um, for that and uh, what really was interesting I feel was uh, when they stand me uh, when I was improvising um, over a song and um, and also how my brain reacted when I was just listening to music in general and what they found was I used my visual cortex for when I'm listening to music um, which was amazing to me because, you know, even though I'm visually impaired, you know, it's, it was really fascinating to know that I use my visual cortex. So, so do you have any sense that you kind of see the music or is it, it's just the, the way, I mean, the way your brain works, obviously that your brain has ad adapted to use it, it's real estate in the best possible way. That's very interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah, um, I think what you said right there, um, you, know, no, you know, my brain adapting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, think that's, you know, that's what it is. Yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you. So you are a pianist, an organist. Do you, do you look at other instruments or are you pretty happy with the piano and the organ? Yes, I also play drums uh, and keyboards as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like I mentioned, you know, each of those instruments, you know, can express themselves in different ways, you know. And um, uh, I love, you know, just experimenting with different instruments. And, you know, I'm always experimenting and learning new techniques and learning new instruments and learning new styles. So it's, you know, constant learning and just, just having fun. So yeah. I read or saw that you that uh, Stevie Wonder had given you a harmonica. Have you learned to play the harmonica? Um, I have played it a little bit. Um, I haven't um played it in a bit, but um um that's a good instrument to uh, to get back into. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so, so thank you for mentioning that. But um yeah, that was an amazing experience of meeting Stevie uh, at ten years old. Um, we were at the Apollo Theater, um, and I was opening for him. He was being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I met him in his dressing room. And, um, um, but yeah, it was an amazing experience. For me. And yeah. I hope to work with him uh, soon, you know, uh, collab. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very exciting, wouldn't it? That'd be yes. So, Matthew, you have said that you are a musician who happens to be blind. And yeah. then you said that I am blessed with a, with a God-given gift and my prayer is that I can continue to be a blessing and an inspiration to others. What do you think that music, um, your music particularly, can contribute to our lives together as humans? Mm, I feel that music can heal, you know, no matter what is going on. Um, um, and 
I feel m music helps us in many ways, and you know I hope to continue to, you know, through my music to inspire people, um, and to just, you know, think positive and and just you know have fun. Okay, that that certainly makes me feel better. <laughs> That's oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Technology is a huge part of our lives today and it's really opened up a lot of opportunities for those of us who are blind as well as the world in general yeah. and i'm curious about you said that you had learned about technology a lot from the greenberg school but yes can you talk about the technology that you're using in your day-to-day -day work yes definitely um um since you mentioned about uh um the greenberg school um i'll mention that first um i learned a software there um, called uh, Lime Allowed, which is by Dancing Dots. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, it allows the user to read and uh, notate music on the computer. And you can use um, uh, a MIDI controller, um, and you can decide what notes you want um, to input, and you input the notes. And what's cool about it is that not only the, um, whoever is cited um, What's cool about it is that um, um, not only that it prints it out in print, but you can also read it in Braille using the Braille display. And wow. um, um, it works best with uh, the JAWS screen reader. Um, um, so that way you, you get the Braille translation as well. Um, but um, I also use Logic Pro on my Mac um, for recording music. And um, I also recently uh, found out that um, this other software that allows you to uh, notate music called Sibelius, um, I figured it out that is, um, it is accessible with ah. voiceover and other screen readers as well. So I've been experimenting with that and figuring out how that works. And um, it's, it's really cool because um, um, I can input files I have from Lime or vice versa, um, you know, from Sibelius and, um, um, and view them in whatever program I want, and, um, which is really cool. So I'm experimenting with that. And like you said, technology is very, you know, you know, used in our everyday lives, you know, so, yeah. So you are using, you, create um, print scores for for your band or for of your compositions yes i have um uh, i've um especially doing juilliard i have um made you know all my uh, assignments into print music using lime mm -hmm. um, and um like i said it's it's great that i have the opportunity to use the braille display because you know like i said it translates everything into the braille music so like um I'm, I'm I'm able to read as well as just hear it, you know, you know mm -hmm. by hearing you know the, the playback from the MIDI, you know. So it's it's really cool. So yeah, that is cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's very cool. At NLS, we're our our technology. We're working on um, scanning music and that sort of thing to to recreate and to to bring forward uh, scores that we didn't have anything but hard copies of. Yeah, yeah, I'm so happy that you guys are, are getting into that. And um, just, um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just say this, that um, I'm glad that you guys are um, always finding ways for us as blind individuals to have access, because a lot of sighted people have access to print music. But um, I feel that, you know, everybody should have a way of accessing music, whether um visually impaired or not you know so i'm i'm so happy that you guys are are continuing to provide access for, for us with web music and um thank you so much for the support um for me when I, um um you know so thank you i was certainly glad that we were there to be able to um to assist with you as you were working through your your schooling so yes 
so are there any um any upcoming you talked about Sibelius are there any other upcoming hardware or software programs that you're excited about um that you think are going to make a difference for you um you mentioned Sibelius yes um um besides Sibelius um I haven't really found anything else um so far you know because um I'm still you know doing research and you know um figuring out what works in and what is coming up mm -hmm. but um I I hope to you know find other software and hardware you know that you know helps us as uh, blind individuals so it's 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 really cool yeah, very good yeah I see that we are kind of coming to the end of our time together today so I'd like to give you a chance to address our younger patrons those who are just beginning to learn their music yeah. or our patrons who love music but might be having a little bit of difficulty in attaining their goals what advice would you give each of them uh, i would say um no matter what form of art um whether you know music related or not um i would say keep practicing and um Come up with new ideas of it, of expressing yourself, um, and just have fun. I feel like that's really one of the most important things is to just have fun, and just be you, and and just yeah, um, be you and have fun. Okay, very good. Thank the um, pandemic has in it had a lot of influence on practically everything that, as we know it. And one of the things that we had hoped when we first started um, talking about this concert was that we would have an in-person concert at the Coolidge Auditorium at the Library of Congress. Unfortunately, yeah. that's not been possible. And so we're doing it all virtually. How, yeah. has, the, how has the pandemic impacted what you've been up to? Um, I mean, I guess I would start off with this. Um, um, playing in front of an audience, um, is i feel um very um very fun for me um because i get to feel the energy from the audience you know um mm -hmm. and doing the live streams you know is is also cool because you know i get to have experience in doing that um but uh, as far as the pandemic um I mean, i've been uh, i've been doing pretty good um as far as the pandemic goes um with the collaboration, uh, it's becoming easier, you know, um, especially with technology, because you know I, I'm able to collab with everyone from around the world, which is amazing, and um, I hope to continue to, to do that in the future. That's one of the things that I find that's um, that's a positive thing uh, during this pandemic. How have you how have you managed that collaboration? What technologies have you used? Um... You've been able to collaborate in real time. As far as technology, um, you know, obviously, you know, logic for recording everything, um, mm -hmm. but you know, using different sites to transfer files like WeTransfer, Dropbox, um, um, but also, uh, uh, you mentioned real time, um, uh, and there's there's one software that I'm happy to, you know try out when when it becomes available uh, and it's called session wire and that allows people to connect um and basically like you said work in real time with very little latency um, oh. which you know which is very cool and um i hope to be using that soon okay session wire is that what you said yeah session wire yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, interesting very interesting it has been a real pleasure to speak with you today. And I know that I spoke for all of NLS when I say that we sincerely appreciate your sharing your insights and your music with us. We're proud to call you a patron of NLS and our services. And our, your music is a gift to all of us. And I know that your example will serve as a role model for aspiring musicians everywhere, and especially for those who are blind or visually impaired. So 
We really look forward to your performance as part of the concerts at the Library of Congress series. And we anticipate with great excitement hearing about how your career continues to grow and to, to blossom. So thank you so very much for this conversation. Thank you so much, Aden, for having me. And uh, like I said before, you know, thank you so much to you guys for, you know, um, your service um, and for helping me, you know, since I was, you know, very little, you know, and, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you.